Well, hello again, friends, neighbors. John, your whiskey neighbor here, and well, welcome back to the Whiskey Nook. I actually never really left. I was shooting some samples uh, from a friend, Dana, who met me, and he gave me a sample of this uh, Pike Creek 15-year-old. And uh, I only have that sample, just this little bit, and I thought, you know, uh, it's not going to last the night, and this would be a good opportunity to finally talk to you guys about 2019's Canadian Whiskey of the Year, Pike Creek 21 X Oloroso Cask. So when we come back together, I'm going to talk to you about this Pike Creek, 21 years old, finished in Oloroso Casks. Three, four. Thanks for staying with me. Uh, this obviously, this bottle, Pike Creek, finished in Exoloroso, 21 years old, 45% comes with uh, a lot of expectation, right? I didn't have a bottle before it was deemed the Canadian Whiskey of the Year in 2019. So when you buy a bottle that carries that title, your expectations are pretty high. And I have to say, so often when expectations are high, they crash. So let's see what I think about this bottle. And then, because I have it, I'm going to compare it to the Pike Creek 15-year-old finished in Cabernet Sauvignon barrels, available only in Ontario, which is a crime. First, let's talk about Pike Creek 21. This line, I think, has always been the underrated northern border uh, range I get that right? The, the, the Rare Range Northern Border Collection release. Uh, really, Lot 40 has always um, been the darling. Bold, strong, and just incredible. But Gooderham and Warts, just, you know, com complex. Uh, I really like their base, uh, four, four grain spirit. And then, they, like Dr. Don, just does some crazy things. Ever since Little Trinity, really like that. Then the 23-year-old cask strength release, just the JP Weiser. What a bottle. I think I have to talk to you guys yet about that. So Pike Creek has kind of been running in the background. Good whiskey. I liked even the first one more than most. Really liked the buttery notes. But I felt like it was always the fourth. Honestly, it was the it was the 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 last of the four. But then in 2019, deemed the best Canadian whiskey you can get. Well, let's see what we get off this. Pike Creek is uh, lots of corn, uh, and then there's a fair amount of rye. I don't know what how much barley's kicking around in there, but I think that's the mash bill. Lots of corn, good hit of rye, and barley to make it work. Let's see uh, what this 21-year-old tells us. Actually, I got quite a, quite a lot of caramel up front. Hmm. I would add to that a, a more gentle fruit note, a full, ripe, red apple, yeah, a little, and, and wine influence for sure. So a little bit of, of, of uh, red tannins. And there, a little more fruit, almost a, like a light tropical, like a light pineapple. I expected the nose to be darker and richer when I first came at this, but I'll say it's rich, but it's a little more, you know, caramel heavy for me. Interesting. Oh, okay. And there, after, you know, you say something and then you come back. And that had some nice um, ripe red fruit to it. Let's see what the palate's like. Hope you have something poured and you can drink along. Cheers.
That was an excellent dram. Start it again. Caramel, butter, good coating. But while in palate, got a little more red fruit, little orange. I'm actually still getting a tiny bit of pineapple. And spicing then comes up on the early finish. Deserves a second taste. More spicing comes up. Good rye spicing. Perks up on my tongue. A little bit of white and black pepper. But the spice note when you're trying to taste it, a little more baking spices, a little closer to clove or older, like so a little bit of wood mixed in with the spicing. Fair amount of oak now. Good oak, the kind of oak you want to taste. Not really old and musty. Fresh, surprising, given its age. More caramel, brown sugar, maple syrup. Those notes are all playing around. Nice dry finish, lasting finish. A Little bit of black tea, yeah. Little bit of that dry, astringent, slight bitter, unsweetened black tea in the finish. And it goes on. I need another sip. <laughs> what a delightful dram. I would suggest it is certainly the best Pike Creek I've ever had. It is not um, crushed or overwhelmed in any one direction. I still feel I've got, I'm getting better at picking up Pike Creek. Uh, you know, it's got a, a corn huskiness. It's got a buttery note to it. I really, really am getting more and more of that, that coating buttery nature from Pike Creek. And I can even go back and get it all the way from that first 21 year old. And I like it. It seems like it's missing a note when I go back to that one. Whereas this really answers as the spice comes up, then that fruit expression. Uh, it's nice, light, very ripe fruit. Mix of almost tropical. I keep saying, you know, pineapple or orange. It's not sharp lemon. This is a good whiskey. I don't know if it's my favorite Canadian. Now, I've only had it this year in 2020. So it's in the running for my best stuff. It's also why I held on to it. So I still had some. I didn't want to hit my best Canadian early on in 2020 and then not have anything in the bottle. But that is a great whiskey. And I know in Alberta, I still know stores that have this on the shelf. It's never gone down in price. It's sat at 100 bucks, which is a lot of money, but not really. When you think of a really good Canadian whiskey, 45% and 21 years old. So if you like Canadian whiskey, I, I really suggest that you give it a try. Now, I shot this tonight, finally. Let me just clear my palate. Because um, Dana gave me a sample of the Pike Creek, now only 15 year, but finished in Ontario Cabernet Sauvignon barrels. And I know that this sample is not going to last the night. And I thought, that needs to be done. What's going on? Very similar color. The Cabernet Sauvignon, definitely darker. Let's try the nose. Heavier wine influence, uh, like a grape now in the fruit. Quite a bit of brown sugar. Let's go back. Oh, in this sitting, lighter, gentler nose, even though I think we're 45% versus 42. Yeah, interesting. Variety of spices going on in that nose. A little bit of sourness came out there, but really brown sugar and, and 
and a yep I am I feel like a wine wine influence let's try the palette Mm. much stronger Cabernet Sauvignon influence waxy grape um, still quite nice still some of that characteristic butter quality that I get in Pike Creek Spicing comes up much quicker in this. And, and depth of spicing is longer. The Oloroso influence is less heavy-handed than the Cabernet Sauvignon. But good stuff. Hmm. You know, I'm really glad I have the sample. Thanks again, Dana. And I'm glad uh, that I was able to do a direct head-to-head. -head. With time, if this has been months ago, and now I'm trying to Pike Creek 15, there, the echoes of this bottle are clear in here, in my opinion. The spicing now coming up more, a little more peppering. Very interesting. I will say head to head, the wine influence is heavier handed on this. Again, that waxy red grape note. The Oloroso finish, which could be very heavy, fermented wine, you know, is, um, is lighter on this. And uh, the spicing more complicated. And I do like this more. Oh, I meant to rate this before I did my head-to-head. -head. Look, I've only had this sample. You've seen me drink almost the entire taste of this. I can't rate this, but very nice. This here, I really can rate. I've been spending some time with this over the year here in 2020. I absolutely love this bottle. I actually might have a different favorite Canadian, so it's not five stars, which is crazy. But it is... A strong four and a half. Now, I think if I were to go back three years, if I had tasted this bottle, it'd be five stars, no question. So I just know that as my palates evolved, I've really held back on those. Oh, this whiskey is changing my life. This whiskey is really good and possibly the best Canadian whiskey I've had all year. And by people who know whiskey way better than me, it was the best Canadian whiskey available in 2019. So I think you can't go wrong on this, but my palate might have a slightly different preference. So this is, you know what? It really is a five-star whiskey. I have to, I have to step up and say that it, it's a, it's just a slightly less than some of the other whiskeys now that I feel are five stars. But really, this is a, this is a five-star whiskey, and and to give it anything less is to, is to be a, a disservice to the work and craftsmanship behind that bottle. Well, that was fun. We'll see if I, uh, I crack off another review yet the same night, but uh, I don't plan on it. I do plan on, on having a good work week, and that means uh, I need to probably slow down. So thanks so much for joining me here, and uh, let me know if you've had experience with the Oloroso, or even better, if you've done this, a sitting between the Cab Sav and the X Oloroso, both Pike Creek, and what did you get? Thanks for joining me. You guys have a great week. Thank you.